Back in mid-April of 2023, the Japan Real Company announced that the JR Pass would be getting a major price hike. Most JR Pass options saw a price hike of at least 65-69%, to 69%, with some price options rising as much as 80% from their old cost. And while it seemed like it was all bad news, I promised to remain cautiously optimistic and update you when we would finally get more news on the pass. Well, the updates are in, and unfortunately, I don't have a lot of good news for you. Not not only is the JR Pass itself getting the massive price hike with limited added benefits, but the regional passes, the economic alternatives to the JR Pass, are taking a hit as well, with some of these passes seeing up to a 50% price increase. But before you give up all hope, let's take a look at what exactly is coming with the price hike so you can determine if it's still worth it, and possible alternatives if the JR Pass just doesn't fit your plans anymore. Alright, let's get to it. To quickly recap, starting October 1st, 2023, the JR Pass is is getting a 65% price hike at a minimum. This is due to several factors like the weak yen and high inflation finally pushing the company to increase the price after trying to keep it the same for decades. But if you plan on visiting up until December, there is a small workaround that you can use to your advantage. Most websites you can use will have a 90 day window to redeem the JR Pass upon the day you purchase it. That means if you buy the JR Pass in mid-September, you will have roughly until mid-December to redeem it. If all of that might be old news to you. This next part is hot off the press and was released by the Japan Rail Company only a few days ago. On July 26th, the JR Company announced they will be adding the Nozomi and Mizuho Shinkansen as an option for tourists that buy the JR Pass. The Nozomi and Mizuho lines are the fastest options on the Tokaido and Sanyo Shinkansen routes, which previously were not included in the JR Pass at all. While this might sound like a good deal at first, you unfortunately will not get unlimited rides on the Nozomi and Mizuho lines, as you will have to pay an additional fee depending on how far you travel. Along with the new benefit, if you want to call it that, they will also apparently be offering a list of discounts at popular tourist destinations with the new JR Pass. But we won't know what that is until September. To be honest, I am pretty disappointed with the lackluster updates they have provided in regards to the JR Pass. They make it sound like they are providing a new perk by being able to ride the Nozomi and Mizuho trains starting in October. But then they sneak in the fact that you will have to pay an additional fee. So not only will you have to pay almost twice the price for the new pass, but you will have to pay even more just to use the new benefit they have included. Regardless of the reasoning to try and justify increasing the price, this is some pretty poor marketing to try and convince tourists it will still be worth it. Not only have they been slow with the updates, but their press releases have been very poor attempts to try and convince people it will still be a worthwhile purchase. And unless the new discount are pretty substantial, it is safe to say the JR Pass will no longer be worth it for a lot of tourists. But because of their slow updates, we won't know if the discounts will be worth it until they release that info in September. I think at the very least, the company could be a little more transparent at publicly disclosing why they've had to increase the price so much, rather than keeping everyone in the dark and expecting people will just accept it. Which is clearly not the case by the way, as this recent survey has made it pretty clear people will not be buying the pass once the price makes this inevitable jump. But despite all this bad news, we can't necessarily say that JR Pass is going to be completely out of the picture, because the super valuable regional passes will be getting a major price hike as well. On the same day the JR Pass is set to increase, the regional passes will simultaneously follow suit, with their prices rising anywhere from 20 to 50%. While some passes might not see that much of a rise, like the Kyushu and Hokkaido Rail Pass, the most popular ones like the Tohoku and Tokyo Pass will be going up a full 50%. While the price increases for the regional passes might also be a little frustrating, at least these seem a little more calculated and provide a better picture of the whole situation. It is pretty clear that the JR company is facing a money crunch due to the high inflation, the weak yen, higher operating costs, and making up lost profits from tourists being away due to the pandemic. This is all pretty consistent with the rest of Japan as well, unfortunately, because there's been plenty of news coverage discussing the absurd price rate rise of everyday goods and cost of living expenses creeping higher every day. And if the regional and JR passes are feeling the heat of inflation, you have to believe that the price of regular Shinkansen tickets will probably be seeing a price hike in the near future as well. So if you want to see if a regional pass or even the JR pass might still fit in your plans, here's a tip for you. Check out the Shinkansen calculator on the Japan Guide website. They have a pretty simple yet effective calculator that will show you whether a pass will be worth it or not based on where you're planning 
to go. It even includes the JR Pass after the price change, which is a nice touch for anyone that is planning far in advance. Alright, so say you've determined these passes are no longer worth it for you, or you want to see what other options you might have. Well, don't worry, because there are still quite a few options at your disposal that we're going to explore right now. Option number one, domestic flights. Domestic flights have always been a good alternative to the Shinkansen for many reasons. The first reason is flights are actually cheaper than Shinkansen tickets most of the time, as long as you buy them in advance. For example, a flight to Hokkaido from Tokyo is only 30,000 yen. If you compare that to the one-way Shinkansen ticket to Hokkaido, which will cost you 28 to 29,000 yen, you'll realize just how much money you're saving by flying. Not only is it cheaper, but it's also faster. While it could take you up to 8 or 9 hours to get to Hokkaido by Shinkansen, taking a plane will get you there in only one and a half hours. And Hokkaido isn't just an outlier, as most flights to anywhere in Japan will take around the same time or less. And if you're concerned about the stress of security and all that comes with flying, well, there's no need to worry. In my experience, Japanese airports are some of the best managed airports in the world, with security being very relaxed and overall being a pleasant experience, especially when it comes to domestic flights. You can usually get through the lines and to the gate in less than 15 to 20 minutes as long as there isn't a massive crowd. Option number two, the Willer Bus Express Pass. The Willer Bus Express Pass is a great choice for anyone that is willing to get a little more adventurous during their travels in Japan. This special bus pass comes in three options, with each choice being very reasonably priced. Plus, you can either choose from the Monday through Thursday option, which can only be used during those days, but for a cheaper price, or you can choose the all day pass, which can be used any day of the week. With this pass, you can book up the three long distance buses per day to anywhere shown on their website's map. And here's the real kicker. You don't have to use these days consecutively. You can use your three, five, or seven days at any point within your two month window from the first use. For example, you could use the first day of your pass to get to Osaka, stay there for a few days, and then move on to Hiroshima and use the second day of the Willer Express Pass. You wouldn't lose any of your Willer Express days while you were staying in Osaka, as you would only get charged for the day you use the pass. And a side note, this includes overnight buses as well, saving you the extra cost that you would spend if you had to stay in a hotel. The only downside with this pass is how long it takes to use a bus compared to the JR Pass or taking a flight. But aside from that, the Willer Bus Express Pass is a very smart option for anyone looking to travel Japan on a budget. If this sounds like the answer to your Shinkansen problems, I provided the link to the website in the description below. Speaking of budget travel, there is one more option that could be a great alternative to the JR Pass. Option 3, Seishun 18 Kipu. This particular travel option is pretty similar to the JR Pass in the regard that you can use JR lines pretty much anywhere in Japan with this pass, but with the exception of Shinkansen and limited express trains. While this might sound a little limiting at first, there are some great benefits to be had with this pass if you know how to use it. First, this pass is very cheap, only costing 12,000 yen for a 5 day pass or about 2400 yen per day. Not only that, but this pass is extremely flexible, allowing you to transfer this pass between friends or even use it for multiple people at the same time. And on top of all of that, this pass can be used non-consecutively just like the Willer Bus Express Pass. And as I said, it is unlimited local train use, so if you plan it well, you could travel to some unique places that would usually be pretty expensive to get to otherwise. The obvious downside to all of this, however, is the extra transit time involved by using all those local trains. And while extra transit time is an obvious downside, another disadvantage that isn't as clear is the limited time windows you have to buy and use these passes. The Seishun 18 Kipu is only available during the busy travel seasons of Japan, so if you don't arrive to buy or use the ticket in these windows, then you'll have to choose the other two options above to get around Japan. If this travel option is available to you and you decide to get it, you can purchase it out of most Shinkansen machines during the allotted time windows mentioned above. Either way, now that you have a better idea of the alternative travel options at your disposal, I hope I have helped provide some solutions for you so you can see all the great sites and cities Japan has to offer without having to break the bank. Leave a like if you found this useful, subscribe for more content in Japan, and check out my affiliate links in the description below for when you plan your next trip to Japan. Alright, that's gonna do it, and until next time, I'll see you then.